Um, this one is called The Watcher, and I promised last week that I would read it, but um, at least in my class I did. Um, so sorry, it took me a little bit to get to it, but it's called The Watcher. It's about Jean Goodall's life with the chimpanzees, and so the reason we were talking about it was um, we do Fancy Dot Friday, and we share a fact, and um, someone shared a fact about chimpanzees, and so I thought it would be a good time to read this book with Earth Day last month and, um, and that timely fact. So here we go. Um, at five years old, Jean was already a watcher. Little Jean Goodall loved to watch all the animals in her, the, in her world, the earthworms and insects, birds and cats. She loved to read about Dr. Doolittle, who could talk to animals. When she grew up, Jean followed her dream and traveled to Africa to study chimpanzees. She watched them, she listened to them, and in time, she became their friend. Renowned children's book creator, Jeanette Winter brings us this moving biography of Jean Goodall, the woman who lived with the chimps and who still speaks out to protect the animals and their homes. Remember, a biography is a story about someone's life that someone else writes. So if I were to write a story about my own life, it would be an autobiography. Um, but if I wrote a book about someone else's life, then it would be a biography. Um, I would want to tell um, kind of like when they were born, maybe about their childhood, maybe about why they are important. And, um, and that's why we read biographies is to learn a little bit more about people and their legacy. So this was The Watcher, Jane Goodall's Life with the Chimps, Jeanette Winter. Jane, Jane, where are you? Jane, can you hear me? Everyone had been searching for hours and hours looking for little Valerie Jane Goodall. Then, from the hen house, Jean came running to her mother, shouting, I know how an egg comes out. At five years old, Jean was already a watcher. Jean watched all the animals in her world, big and small. Earthworms, insects, birds, cats, dogs, and horses. Jean quietly watched an English robin at her window for days and weeks. She saw him come close, closer, then in her room to eat some crumbs off her bed. When spring came, the robin even built a nest in Jean's bookcase. Wow. Perched high in her favorite beech tree, Jean read about Dr. Doolittle talking to the animals and Tarzan living with apes in Africa. She wanted to go to Africa too and talk to the animals and live with the apes. But she was imagining herself like that, climbing the tree. When Jane's school days were over, she worked and saved to buy a ticket to Kenya. She hid her earnings under the parlor rug for safe safekeeping. Parlor is like a fancy word for a sitting room or like a living room. Crossing the ocean, Jane stayed on deck and watched the waves, even when the cold wind blew. She saw all the different blues and greens of the sea and fish that glowed through the dark water. There she is on the boat. As Jean stepped onto dry land, she closed her eyes in joy. Jean looked for work with the animals. There's her stepping off the boat. A famous scientist, Louise Leakey, was looking for someone to watch, oh sorry, Louis Leakey, was wa looking for someone to watch and study chimpanzees to help us understand the animal most like us. Would Jane be interested? Yes, she would. Jane traveled to the place in, Tanz um, in Tanzania where the chimps lived, Gombe. I wanted to learn things that no one else knew. Uncover secrets, she wrote. She sounds like she's keeping a journal or a diary. Or perhaps we know what she wrote from a letter home. She set up camp far from any human dwelling. Dwelling's a fancy for a place, a fancy word for a place to sleep or live. That first night, Jane lay awake listening to new sounds. The croak of a frog, the hum of crickets, the laugh of a hyena, the hoot of an owl. And looking up at the stars, she knew she was home. At dawn, Jane walked into the forest. Up high, she found a peak to watch from. Every day, she climbed the peak to look for chimps. 
but though she could hear their pant hood calls to one another, she didn't see them. Jane walked down into the forest, hoping a chimp would appear. Still, the cautious chimp stayed hidden. Secretly, they watched Jane. When will I see a chimp, she wondered. I love these illustrations. Then Jane fell ill with malaria. So she got sick with a disease called malaria. Lying in her tent, burning with fever, she almost lost hope. But when the fever left her body, she tried again to get close to the chimps. More weeks and months passed till one day the chimps let Jane see them. She stayed in the background, never hid, acted uninterested, and quietly watched. Now Jane watched every day, all day, even huddled in the rain. She saw the chimps accept the rain, not look for shelter as we do, and she kept notes about it all. You have to be patient if you want to learn about animals, she wrote. Some nights, Jane even slept on the peak to be near the tree where the chimps were sleeping. She woke at dawn and saw them slowly rise from their nests, sit for a spell, and then go off to find food. Jane named the chimps. To her, each one was different, just like us. A gray-bearded chimp was the first to approach Jane. She named him David Graybeard. David Graybeard has... Yes, he has taken bananas from my hand so gently. No snatching, she wrote. David Graybeard let Jane come close. She watched him shape a stick into a tool to dig for termites. Before this, nobody knew that wild animals made tools. She watched David Graybeard eat meat. Before this, everybody thought chimps only ate plants. So she's changing what people had thought about chimps. And because David Graybeard trusted Jane, now the other chimps let Jane come close too. Chimps all around me, what a day. Chimps near, chimps far, old men, young men, ladies, children, babies, teenagers, the lot, she wrote. Jane watched the chimps when they were happy. She saw them hold hands and hug and kiss and laugh just like us. She's taking notes. She's got to write everything down so she remembers it. Jane watched the chimps when they were angry or scared and their hair stood up on end. See how their hair looks different in this illustration than that one? It's all prickly. It's breaking up. She saw them swagger and throw tantrums and she kept out of the way. Jane watched the chimps at the Kokobi waterfall, leaping and swinging in awe and wonder at the tumbling water. At night, after a supper of beans and tomatoes and onions, Jane listened to Mozart and Bach, their famous classical music, musicians, and she would listen to them as she wrote up her notes from the day. Years of notes were piled high everywhere. Jane needed help, and so assistants came to watch and write. That's, you see all those notes that she wrote? So soon assistants came to help her watch and write and maybe organize those notes. One day, Jane sa sadly left Gombe. All across Africa, forests were being cut down and the chimps were losing their home. Poachers were shooting grown chimps and kidnapping their babies to sell the laboratories into the circus and as pets. Jane's beloved chimpanzees were in danger of becoming extinct. They needed Jane to speak for them. Jane hated to leave her friends, but she knew she must. She traveled to big cities and small towns the world over, month after month, year after year, asking for help to save the chimps and the forests. Jane returned to the forest of Gombe whenever she could. She climbed up to the peak, calling hello to the streams and hills and trees with David Graybeard at her side.
Jean watched and listened again to the pant hook calls of her friends. And when she went back to civilization to speak out for the chimps, Jean carried with her the peace of the forest. The forest in Gombe, where she talked to the animals like Dr. Doolittle and walked unafraid like Tarzan and watched and wrote and opened a window for us to the world of the chimpanzees. So she taught us about the chimpanzees so that we would have it in our hearts to protect them and care for their habitat. Animals need special places to live, that keep them that are good, a good environment for them to live in. And humans do a lot of damage to a lot of different types of habitats and environments. So it's good to have people like Jane speak up for the animals. A note about this story. Jane Goodall grew up in England, but she dreamed of living in Africa. I wanted to watch wild animals, not animals in cages, she wrote. To simplify her story, I focused solely on Jane's own accomplishments. I omitted mention of her married life, her son, and her mother's unwavering support. Jane was 26 years old in 1960 when she arrived at the Gombe Stream Chimpanzee Reserve in western Tan um, Tanzania to study the chimps. Because she was young, Jane's mother accompanied her to Gombe, but she returned to England soon after, knowing that her daughter could take care of herself. And so began Jean's life's work. She referred to herself as the white ape that the chimps came to accept. Because of her patience, she was able to study the life cycle of the chimps, knowing some of them from birth to death. Her observations and writings uncovered many secrets of the animal world. In 1986, Jane attended a conference organized around her groundbreaking book, The Chimpanzees of Gombe, Patterns of Behavior. At the conference, she learned of the deforestation and destruction of the chimps habitat all across Africa. And so she left her work and began speaking out to help save the chimps. She still travels most of the year working to save animals in the land they live in. Jane the White Ape wrote while in Africa, this is where I belong. This is what I came in the world to do. And the animal kingdom is the richer for it. I wish that when I was a little girl, so this is from Jane, I wish that when I was a little girl, I could have read about someone like Jane Goodall, a brave woman who wasn't afraid to do something that had never been done before. So now I've made this book for that little girl who still speaks to me. So that was what the author wrote about having someone to look up to like Jane Goodall. Um, if you're interested in learning more about Jane Goodall, she has written a number of books about her life, including My Life with the Chimpanzees and The Chimpanzees I Love, Saving Their World and Ours. You can also visit janegoodall.org. Um... So I, um, I think that would be a fun thing to do. I think I'm going to go learn a little bit more about Jean Goodall. I don't know much about her. I know there's a documentary out to you right now that just came out recently, and I'd like to watch that and learn more. Um, but this was a good biography to start with, and I hope you enjoyed it, and I hope you learned a little bit more about Jean Goodall today. Thanks.